Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. On the outside, Rob and Candy Hall had a picture perfect life, but we all know that pictures never really tell the full story. Candy, Rob, and their two teenage daughters uprooted their lives in California and moved to Meridian, Idaho, a relatively large city with tons of greenery and views of the mountains. In September of 2010, 40-year-old Candy was introduced to 30-year-old Emmett Corrigan, who was looking to hire a paralegal. Emmett and Candy began having an affair within weeks of knowing each other, and it continued throughout her time working for him. Emmett was married with five kids, but that didn't stop Emmett and Candy's relationship. The affair continued for months until it reached its tragic conclusion on March 11th of 2011. That night, Candy and Emmett met up at a Walgreens parking lot where she left her car and got into his truck. The two drove around and stopped to have sex. Rob, the husband, found out that Candy's car was at the Walgreens parking lot because one of their daughters happened to drive by and see it. So he got in his car, went to Walgreens, and he searched for his wife. He came up empty-handed, then waited in his car until she returned, and soon enough, Emmett and Candy pulled in. Rob and Emmett started arguing, and Rob shot Emmett in the head and in the chest, Rob then tried to shoot himself, but instead he gave himself a graze wound on the top of his head. Rob was convicted in 2012 of second degree murder and sentenced to 30 years in prison. He will be eligible for parole in 2028. Meanwhile, Candy was arrested for stealing over $32,000 from one of her previous employers. In 2013, Candy pleaded guilty to grand theft and was sentenced to two to 14 years in prison she was just released in 2020. Rob appealed his conviction in 2016, but the appellate court upheld the original decision. He then appealed to the Idaho Supreme Court in 2021, which also affirmed his guilty conviction. Now let's take a look back at a case where a rendezvous at the drugstore turned deadly. Candy Hall was the woman behind the harrowing 911 call. Candy, her husband Rob, and their two teenage daughters had just moved from California to Idaho, where they settled in Meridian, a quiet town at the foot of the majestic Rockies. Rob and Candy Hall had been married for more than 15 years, and by a lot of accounts from their friends, were happy. Rob worked as a computer guy at the local sheriff's department. Candy was a paralegal, but the 40-year-old wife and mother was dealing with career struggles. She had recently lost a job at another law firm, and so she was looking for somewhere to work, and that's how she met Emmett, was through being a paralegal. Enter Emmett Corrigan, her soon-to-be boss. The rising legal star was boyishly handsome, cocky, and ambitious, and that just 30 years old had just opened his own law practice. Emmett was, uh, by all accounts, an up-and-coming kind of hotshot attorney. Emmett appeared to lead a charmed life. Not only did he have a thriving career, he had a beautiful wife named Ashley. How long were you and Emmett dating before he proposed? We were dating like two months. We dated really fast and we both just kinda knew it was what we wanted. They were married in a Mormon temple. By the time Ashley's 30, she has five kids, uh, three girls and two boys. The Corrigans were the picture of the squeaky clean all-American family. And with Emmett's career on the up and up, the future looked bright. Emmett is very driven, very enthusiastic. He was going to start taking more clients and be very successful. And Candy was thrilled to be part of a vibrant new firm. But just as her professional life was making a turn for the better, her personal life was falling apart. She was having problems in her own marriage. Candy at times had told people that Rob had been abusive toward her, that Rob had had an affair of his own. Reeling from the news of her husband's infidelity, Candy immersed herself into work, logging long hours at the office. She was in a place where she was looking for something else. And it seems Candy found that something else in her dashing young boss, 10 years her junior. She was looking for something to be fulfilling to her, and Emmett had filled that for her. 
It wasn't long before Candy and Emmett struck up a torrid affair, exchanging racy emails, spicy text messages, and indulging in late night rendezvous. They were having sex, apparently sometimes in the office. They tried to keep the relationship on the down low, but soon the illicit affair became an open secret in the office. There were a number of coworkers who said they knew what was going on and clients also knew in some cases. And around that time, Ashley, newly pregnant with her fifth child, noticed her husband becoming distant. At what point did you realize that something started to shift with Emmett? I started thinking, there's got to be another woman or something. And the kids were starting to say, does he live here anymore? He's always at work. Looking back, Ashley remembers from the get-go, she had uneasy feelings about Emmett's new work wife. I said, Emma, I don't feel good about this one. And he was like, what do you mean? She's like the, a mother figure. Like, she really believes in me. She thinks that I'm going to be this great defense attorney. A mother figure who showered new mom Ashley with gifts. She had sent me presents when the baby was born for myself and the baby. She sent you presents? She sent me presents. This is while she's having an affair mm -hmm. with your husband? Yep. I even took all of his baby pictures with blankets that she had given me. Did you suspect that she had a thing for your husband or that he may have had one for her? To be honest, I'd always be like, she's like 40, he just turned 30. Ashley, no, there's no way. I mean, you're, you're 28 years old. But despite glaring red flags flying, Ashley was convinced she was paranoid when she made an appointment with the therapist, Emmett didn't show up. Did you seek counseling? I ended up going by myself to this appointment and I kind of sat in there asking him to fix me. Like, I think I have issues and just like started going off to this counselor and by the end he was like, Ashley, I feel like something's really wrong. Desperate to save her marriage, Ashley planned a special night. She hoped it would finally convince her husband to stay home. It was kind of one of those days where I'm like, today's it, I need him to see us. I'm gonna have the kids all dressed to the nines and the food and everything's gonna be perfect. And he came home late, the food was cold, the kids were tired and he didn't need a bite of my food. And like so many other nights, Emmett picked a fight and then took off. Emmett came and said, hey, I'm gonna run to Walgreens real quick. I'm, I got this cold, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and just get some medicine. And I knew he was gonna be gone a long time. But this night of deceit would change everything forever. At the same time, just a few miles away, Candy tells her husband she's going to run a quick errand or something more like a hookup. So around nine o'clock, Candy, her car pulls into Walgreens and then Emmett's truck pulls into Walgreens and Candy says she got in Emmett's truck and then they went over to a gas station, filled up his truck with gas and then they went to a nearby subdivision and they had sex in the truck. Love and lust clearly had Candy and Emmett thinking no one knew, until an odd coincidence would change everything. Candy's daughter just happened to drive into the parking lot and noticed her mom's empty car. Thinking it was strange, she called her dad. Well, Rob starts to wonder what's going on. And so Rob called Candy's phone. Candy answered the phone and Emmett took the phone out of her hands. Candy says that Emmett started to get um, threatening to Rob on the phone. Robert heads to Walgreens, hellbent on finding his wife on a supposed errand. As you can see on these store surveillance videos, Rob parks his pickup truck, goes through the front door, and roams the aisles looking for Candy, never realizing Candy and her lover Emmett were in his pickup truck. Here you can see Rob leaving the store and checking Candy's parked BMW. Then, strangely, he gets back into his own pickup truck, pulls out, and parks again on the other side of Candy's car. His door is now just out of range of the store surveillance camera. But the unseen reality is, Rob has a gun. Rob Hall was armed with a gun that wasn't in a holster. And what happens next is a shocker. Rob's gun was a gift from Candy. Rob Hall hightails it over to Walgreens when he learns his wife Candy is there and she's rendezvousing with her lover, who also happens to be her boss. In January, Rob sends Candy a message that says, basically, good luck with Emmett. Once the honeymoon's over, karma's a bitch. I'll have the last laugh. 
Now, like a hunter stalking his prey, Rob pulls up to Walgreens. Store surveillance tape shows Rob entering the drugstore. He paces the aisle looking for his wife, but there is no sign of candy. That's because she's with Emmett, having sex in his pickup truck. Rob goes back out to his car. He then moves his truck to the other side of Candy's car, which is critical because he has now moved his car outside of the surveillance camera shot. In that parking spot, next to Candy's car, Rob lays in wait for his wife. 17 minutes later, Candy and Emmett pull up and see Rob. What they don't know is he has a gun in his pocket and revenge on his mind. Candy says at some point, Rob provoked Emmett by saying, why don't you go home to your wife? You have five kids at home. And then that set Emmett off. He pushed off of his truck and came at Rob. Candy says she turned to leave and never saw what happened after that. What happened? Someone was about to end up dead. Three gunshots. Emmett was shot in the chest and in the head, and Rob had a gunshot wound, a graze wound to his head. Candy frantically calls 911. Minutes later, help arrives. Rob is rushed to the hospital, but Emmett lies bleeding out in the arms of his lover, Candy. Candy says she then runs over to Emmett and is trying to put pressure on the wound, trying to figure out what happened. She saw Rob start to get up and she said she actually grabbed the gun and she threw it, she said she threw it like a bowling ball across the parking lot. It didn't matter. Emmett died at the scene. Cops swarm Walgreens and arrest Rob on the spot. But across town, Emmett's wife, Ashley, is about to get the worst unsuspected news imaginable. And I open up the front door to these three strangers. They said there's been, there's been two shots of a gun. There's been an accident, an affair. Ashley says what happens next is a blur. I remember looking around the room and everything just felt dizzy and I almost felt worthless. Like three people all were making these choices that I had no idea were gonna change the rest of my life. Ashley claims she had no idea about Emmett's affair until that fatal night. Tragedy, of course, you lost a husband. Your kids are now fatherless, but the insult to the marriage as well. It was basically his own doing. I mean, how do you reconcile those feelings? It just didn't make sense, and it was really a mix of emotions, wondering, like, why wasn't I enough? Why wasn't I enough for a husband who had a moment and a chance? I begged him to stay home and fight for me, but instead he died fighting for someone else's wife. Your husband died in the arms of another woman. How did that make you feel? Worthless. Ugly. Fat, I just had a baby. <laughs> um, just alone. Humiliated that the whole town heard the same news at the same time I did. At the hospital, Rob is treated for head wounds. Cops question him about the shooting. He was on morphine. He's not being super lucid about what's going on. And he says, Emmett shot me. And then he says, I shot and he stops. And he never says the end of the sentence. What happened in that 17 minute gap between the time when Rob waits for his wife by her car and Emmett winds up dead? Their surveillance cameras didn't capture the moment of execution, but there is one person who was there. There are no witnesses in the parking lot or customers or neighbors that saw someone pull a gun on someone else. And the only eyewitness is Candy Hall. And cops soon bring her in for questioning. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> when detectives walk into the interrogation room, Candy is hysterical. Yeah. Are you Candy? Yeah. Please help us put this together as best as we can. We'll match statements with evidence. I mean, you know how police work goes, I, I guess. I know. I do it all day long. Okay. Candy tells detectives she went to Walgreens to pick up a prescription, and it's there she met with Emmett, her boss. She says they are just friends and needed to vent about her marital troubles. Rob, my husband, has, um, 
he has had a really hard time with me working with Emmett. Emmett being um, younger and, you know, uh, uh, um, aggressive attorney. And um, I have been working with him for since October. Okay. Are you and uh, are you and Emmett involved in a romantic relationship? No. Have you ever been romantic with Emmett? No. Okay, now let's say sexual. Have you been sexual with Emmett? No. Candy is obviously lying to detectives. Her naughty emails, texts, and coworkers would attest to that. Then she tells cops she got in Emmett's truck and they went to get gas. So when um, I went and got gas at Fred Meyer with um, Emmett, and then I, we were driving back, my daughter called me and she said, Mom, where are you? And um, I, I told her I was with Michelle, and that is my best friend Michelle, because I didn't want to tell her that, who I was with. But Candy leaves out one very important detail. After getting gas, the couple headed to a secluded spot to have sex in his pickup. Candy's daughter sends something fishy about her mom's Michelle story. That's when she called her dad. So then Rob calls, and he um, calls me and I pick up, and he's like, what are you doing? And I said, I am out. He said, are you out with Emmett? And I said, I am. And he said, what are you doing? And I said, we're just talking and then Emmett goes let me talk to him and then Emmett got really upset with Rob on the phone and start and said something like I'll, I'll break your head. Candy brushes off Emmett's threat and they drive back to Walgreens but when they arrived Rob was lying in wait. Emmett got out of the truck and I got out and I stood there and Rob came up and and Emmett's a very aggressive man. Um, he's, um, he bodybuilds, you know, so he's, he's really pumped up all the time. And um, he got like this close up into Rob's face. And I remember, and I go, hey, knock it off. This is ridiculous. Candy says when she turned to leave, she heard the tragic sound ring out. And I hear pop, pop, and then pop. And that's all I heard. And I turned around and both of them were laying on the ground. And then I ran over and I was like, I was pretty stunned at that point. I was like, what in the world? Because I didn't even know what the pop pop was. It almost sounded like a balloons popping. And it was kind of like on his, like this. And I I didn't know what was going on. And I just see all this blood and crushing down his rough face. So I went over and I covered He had this wound on his Candy says she never actually saw the shooting. She then describes how her husband Rob stood up after being shot. He was walking forward, and and I see him going down, and I grab. I'm like, because I didn't know what he was grabbing for, because I I didn't even see it, because it's little. Rob was reaching for the gun. A terrified Candy didn't know what her husband would do next. So I grabbed it and I, I was holding on to his shirt because it looked like he was going to fall. And I grabbed the gun and I went, no, 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 no. And I'm, I'm like, no, you need to sit down, no, no. And I took it and I threw it in the street and that's, that's all and then he collapsed. These two families were forever changed by the actions of three adults. Her lover, Emmett Corrigan, is dead. And scorned husband, Rob Hole, is now on trial for murder. And unfortunately, there were so many other paths he could have taken. For a week, salacious secrets spilled out of the courtroom. The defense arguing that Rob Hole was pushed to the brink of madness, a man consumed with jealousy over his wife's affair with her boss. But they claimed he shot in self-defense after an altercation with Emmett. The defense really worked to paint Emmett as an aggressive sort of person who had a temper. The prosecution painted Rob as a man obsessed who hunted down his wife and her lover, first taking aim at Emmett, then turning the gun on himself. One of the pieces of critical evidence for the prosecution was that in Rob Hall's truck, he had been carrying around these printed out emails between him and his wife. And these emails were talking about the affair with Emmett. And so the prosecutor said, he's angry. He went there angry. And then there's the matter of Rob's gun, which ironically was a gift from Candy. The most damning evidence appeared to be the fact that Rob Hall's gun 
holster was in his center console. And a gun expert that testified said, you don't take your gun out of your holster unless you intend to aim it at somebody or something. What exactly happened during those critical 17 minutes before the shooting is actually a mystery, leaving attorneys to fill in the blanks. So there are these wedges of surveillance tape that are missing that don't show Rob getting out of his car. So we don't know, did he jump out of his car with his gun pulled? We don't know, did he casually get out of his car and walk over? We can't see anything. And neither did anyone else. There was only a single witness to the fatal shooting, Candy Hall. You also have just kind of this incredible eyewitness who didn't actually eyewitness anything, she says. She says being the key point here. In fact, a lot of what Candy said on the stand changed depending on the day. One of many stories she changes was whether or not Rob and Emmett actually had physical contact in the moments before the shooting. She would tell them what they wanted to hear, basically. And as you can hear in this courtroom audio tape, even the judge was at his wit's end. Frankly, uh, any testimony by uh, Ms. Hall, uh, in my 31 years on the bench, I don't think I've seen a witness more thoroughly discredited in the course of a proceeding. The judge said that he's never had somebody change their story so many times. She was lying. Yeah. And to add insult to injury, Ashley, Emmett's wife, was shocked by how lovey-dovey the Halls carried on in court. The two rekindled their failing love after the shooting. What was Candy's demeanor at trial? Her and her husband at the trial were very loving to each other, saying, I'm sorry, I used to love you. Then, after both sides rested, the moment Ashley had been waiting for. I remember the last day walking in as the judge is standing up to announce the verdict. And I thought I was going to have that Beauty and the Beast rooftop, the light shines through you and everything feels whole. And instead, the judge stood up and announced everything. And all I could see was these two mothers, a mother whose son was now going to be in jail for a long time and a mother whose son had been killed. And it like, it tore me apart, realizing that there's other people hurting, probably just as much as me. Now listen to this audio recording as the judge reads the verdict. Has the jury reached a unanimous verdict? Yeah. And Mr. Hall, if you could please stand. Is Robert Dean Hall guilty or not guilty of second degree murder? Guilty. Guilty of murder in the second degree. But before the sentencing, Emmett's family had scathing words for Rob Hall. The second you took out that gun at the holster, you already knew what you were going to do with it, didn't you? You killed my son. I miss my husband. I need a repeater, and he should be here. I didn't tell you about my babies pounding on a casket. <laughs> Their hero's body lying inside, <laughs> screaming for him to wake up, and screaming at me because I was the thing, <laughs> telling him that we couldn't open the box. Then it was Rob Hall's turn to speak. The shockwaves beyond that have shattered Emmett's wife. Ashley and their children. And I'm so sorry. But sorry will never fix the pain he's caused so many people. Hall was sentenced to 30 years in prison. He'll be eligible for parole in 2030, just past his 60th birthday. What would you say if you were able to talk to Candy? You know, I'd probably just tell him that I forgive him because holding on to hate for anybody for me hasn't worked. All it's done is stop me from living. And as for Candy, she was sent to prison, but not for that fatal night. She served 18 months for embezzling from another law firm. So she's made a series of poor decisions. Yeah, I think a lot of people in my story have. But as for Ashley's story, her next chapter is one of incredible strength and courage. The mother of five is now a motivational speaker, has written three books, and as for her kids... What do you tell your kids? about their father. They'd come home from school, hey, my friend said he saw on the news this and this and this. And at first, I was tempted to lie. He got in a wreck, everything's gonna be okay. And then I realized that lies are what got us where we were. So now we talk about his good qualities, but we also talk about the choices that he made and how our choices do determine our destiny. And I think for them, it's given them a, 
a reason to try harder in life and to make good choices and to always put your best foot forward. 